So at this point, I've posted one item. You may have posted more than one. And uh, maybe you also experimented a little bit with the different kinds of posts. You can add photos. You can add more than one photo and make a photo album. If you add a link, let me show you an example of this. I'm going to go to my company's blog, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. So let's say there's a blog post I want to share or something on my website. That would be a link. So what I would do is I would copy the link from my website. I would copy it from my website and I would share it on Google Plus under the link, uh, under the item for the link. Because then what would happen is if I add link and paste my link, uh, my the, the connection is a little slow, but it would then try to grab a picture from your post and a little synopsis like that. It took this, it took our logo and then it put this text for me. So if I go like say specifically to my blog checklist post, this one, um, and I share a link, it'll scan that page and look at that, it took the thumbnail and the first snippet of what I wrote, of what we wrote. So sharing links is very effective because two things happen. One is it might write itself for you based on what you've already written on the actual link. And secondly, it's a link back to your site. When, when I publish this, and you know, I can still add some text there, but let's say I don't, and I share this, my followers or whoever sees this publicly will see this picture and they'll see um, the text and such and then they'll have the ability to click and it takes them back to my website. So it's kind of all in one. The text, the picture, the link. So that's why sharing links is one of the most powerful things, especially if you're sharing something from your own site. Video, you can pull in YouTube videos. Yes. What is true regarding SEO? So if you're attaching a video or a link or even, for example, a share from someone else, mm -hmm. does it assist in SEO if you actually put something in the text versus just sharing what they did, for example, or putting in just the video or something like that? Yeah, if you put in just this, this item itself, if this itself is not optimized, then right. it would be a good idea for you to further add a sentence to optimize it with some keywords and that sort of thing. But if itself it already is optimized, which in this case it is, then maybe not quite necessary. So you can share videos and look at that. You can share directly from YouTube because guess what? Google Plus is owned by Google. If you didn't know, YouTube is owned by Google. Google Search is owned by Google. Gmail is owned by Google. So all these things are connected. And if, uh, if you search within Google here, like uh, how to install WordPress, let's say, you'll find a variety of videos that you can share. This is just things that will pop up through all of YouTube. Or if you've got the video to a particular, uh, you've got the link to a particular video, you can paste it here. You can record a video right now. If you've got a web camera, um, you can record a video right now. <coughs> You can upload a video directly. You don't need to have a YouTube account to upload videos. If you've got a Gmail, uh, a, 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 G, a Google Plus account, you can upload video. If you take my Friday morning social media class part two, one of the things that we're going to do is spend the day talking about how to get good at, at YouTube. Different kinds of videos that we can create, free software that we can use to create videos, advice on effective videos, and thumbnails and all of that. So I'll mention the class again before we leave, but there's different kinds of content we can share. And my recommendation was three to five posts to nobody at the moment, but you want to have something here so that when someone previews your page, there's something for them to be enticed to actually follow you. And that works for all the networks. I would do the same thing on Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, etc. Periscope, and that brand new one I just heard of, Blab. So that's fine. I'm posting stuff. Let's assume we've got three or five items. And now, actually, I'll talk about a more effective way to post. And before that, any questions so far? 
Okay, so right now we're talking basically to, we're like standing in, in a crowded um, uh, street fair, and we're talking, and people could hear, less will pay attention. What if I go to a part of that street fair that people are talking about something that they all care about and that I care about? So um, that's where communities come in. If you hover over your menu and select communities, <coughs> This is where people are congregating on Google Plus on a particular topic. Some suggestions. The Eating Right community has 922,000 members. The Photography community has 1.8 million members. The Gaming community has 755,000. Traveling, 429,000. So these are communities of people that have a Google Plus account that have joined a community and started to post on a particular topic. Don't click join yet. There's still some nuances I want to talk about. But we've got some examples, some suggestions. Health news, social media strategy. There's a place here that people are talking all about social media strategy. Maybe you want to learn some of that stuff. There's a, there's a small business community. That could be useful. Again, uh, you don't have to click join yet, just yet. But we've also got search at the top right. Uh, we've got search up there for people, pages, and posts, and in this screen we've got search communities. So I'm a baker. I want to join communities about baking. So I might put in here search baking. Type a word and press enter. Baking. And it pops up cakes and baking. 479,000 members. Baking skills. 159 members. Baking and cooking, 13 members. And then it goes on, keep decreasing. So communities are great because this is going to be our captive audience. But we have to be careful. Just because we see these four communities does not mean I'm going to join all four. This only has 13 members, and it's probably not very active. It only has 12 posts. So out of 13 people, they've only managed to post 12 things. 479,000 members have managed to post 76,000 things. That seems more active. So the thing about communities that we have to know is, are we joining communities that have enough of a critical mass, enough people? I would recommend join communities with at least 1,000 members. If it's got 900 or 800, close enough, perhaps. But if it's got 159, I don't think that's viable. The gene pool is too small. So larger communities could potentially be good because there's more people that you could reach. Larger communities could be potentially bad because there's too many people and you could be drowned out by the rest. So let's say I'm interested. Let me, uh, let me go back and search one more time, just cooking. I've got families cooking with kids. Recipes, cooking, and food, cooking, vegetarian cooking. There's these three communities. And they've got lots of members. They fit that criteria, at least. But I've got more criteria. You can preview a community. You don't have to click join yet. I would recommend first, click on the thumbnail to view the content of the community. You don't have to join to view. So I'm going to click on the cooking community. And then I see cooking, heating up life in the kitchen. It's got 176,000 members. It has all of these different sections. You can organize your content into sections. Discussion, food, cooking, baking. These are the members. It'll show you all the members. And then the posts. And oftentimes, somewhere on the right side, about this community. And then oftentimes, there will be rules. These communities are made by people using Google+, not employees of Google or the, the algorithm of Google. This is regular people creating a community and enticing people to join and such. And therefore, some communities then have strong moderators. The people that created the community could decide what gets shown, what doesn't, who can be in, who can be kicked out. And they have rules. This one seems to be very open-ended. This is a group for home cooks to discuss our art and craft. 
we can easily find a community that says, do not post links to your store, do not post more than three times, do not cross post. You know, they're going to have rules, they're going to have moderators, because someone created the community and cares to moderate it. This is not automatic. Regular people control this. So that's why I say, don't just join a community. Look at the community, see what they're posting, see what they're about, see their rules. Because some might have such strict rules that it doesn't even benefit you to join a community. Some of them don't say join community. Some of them, I think, say ask to join community. You have to be good enough to join their community. That's why you're going to have a few posts on your profile, because someone's going to check you out. What are they posting about? Not related to this? No join. Yourself in the community? You can. I'll show that in one moment. Uh, so I want to check. Does it have enough members? Looks good. Uh, what are the rules? Pretty open-ended. That's good. Then I want to look at how often are people posting and is there interaction? Are people just posting and posting and posting their stuff and no one replies? No one plus ones? No one shares? If, if I see too much of that, it may still not be a good community, even if it hit two out of three. So I'm going to take a look here. Sujay posted this. He's got three plus ones. Paprika Rocks posted this. There's four plus ones. Jessica posted five plus ones, nine. I'd be a little bit more worried if there were no plus ones. This one's got a few shares. That's good. Some shares there. This has got three comments. This has got a share. This looks overall good. That's got 15 plus ones. So this community seems to be active in that people post and have a dialogue. If you see a community with 2,000 and you see people are posting, 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 and nothing has a plus one, it's not a good community to get into because your content will also be ignored. So this place looks good. I might want to join it. It's about variety of food. Uh, cookies are a food, so I can, I can join this. So let's say I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to click Join Community. <coughs> the point of this is, now that I've joined it, look at that. Post to this community. Post to these 176,000 members. Mm -hmm. No longer point posting something out to public, which is everyone, which yeah. it, in a sense is no one, and, po and posting to my circles, which are <coughs> empty. If I join a community related to what I care about, what my business is about, and if it's active and such, if I join a community, now I have this captive audience that I can build. 176,000 people that could potentially see my post. Whereas right now I have zero followers. So I can easily join a community. And if you join the wrong community, you can always come back right here to the community, click on this little gear, these little options. Once you've joined the community, you have options for the community. And one of the options is leave. <coughs> leave the community. So I've joined the community for the purpose of posting to the community. So here, I can add text and photos or whatever. Let's say I'm going to add some text. Now two changes to what is the category of this community? I cannot ch share to a community and to extended circles. It will automatically be public and to the community, but I can't share it to only the cat people and this community. It has to be either the community or the cat people because it's not an option here. So here I'm sharing to the baking category of the cooking community, so they would see it, as well as in my public profile, my public company page. So I'm going to say, uh, we are uh, trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. What do you suggest we bake or we try to bake the largest of? So we've chosen a community. 
we have more of a target audience, of a captive audience. That still brings us back, what are we going to post? We have these options of posting these items. And I said earlier, think about posting something that your followers or communities would care about. And another good tactic is ask a question. People are going to be enticed to answer. If they answer, then you can follow up their comment with another comment. There's the dialogue, which could then result in a follow. Because I'm going to post this, and I might get a plus one. I might get a share. I might get a reply. I might get a follow. If I don't get a follow, that's my ultimate goal. Well, maybe someone replied. I could follow them. I could reply to them. That might entice them enough, and they might think, oh, this company is legitimate. They're interesting. I'll follow them. So that's the dialogue. I added the italics right here because not everyone is using those tricks of bold and italics and if mine does then it could stand out for people when they're just browsing and seeing a bunch of the same thing over and over the text maybe runs together eventually and then I um, mine stands out or is bold so it might catch their attention like that right there that stood out for me so I'm gonna share and yes, this is the thing also that is kind of scary as a beginner to all of this, of social media, the social and social media. One of the strongest tactics to get followers and such is that you are going to interact with strangers. You've got Facebook, which is a one-to-one -one connection. Someone requested you to be friends on Facebook. You remember them from high school, so you click accept. And now you're connected. You don't, they cannot see your stuff unless you approve that. Here, it's more of a one-to-many connection in that many could connect to me, but I don't need to connect to them all. I can get followers, but I don't need to follow them back. And so posting here to this community has exposed my post to up to 176,000 people. And as I've been talking, someone else has posted something here also. It's active. It's real time. It's happening right now. Is, is there a link back to your web, to your page? Not unless I write it. I didn't write anything except that back there. So therefore, no, there's no link back to my site. You could click on your name there, your profile view. Yes, they could, just like I can do over here with Jessica, I can roll over here and I'll get a preview. This is Jessica. Maybe if they filled in their biography, it would show up here. And then I've got the option to add or to follow. So okay. someone else would see that for me. Question? Um, so, could you just say again, when you're posting in a community, um, it's only, your post is only being seen by those 176,000 people, but not the public, or, and the public. And to the public. But not any of your circles or anyone else. They can't see it. The reason why, saying? close, the reason why I might want to share something to a, uh, to a circle is because those people in the circle would get a notification that you've shared something with them. So we cannot choose circles here, therefore those people don't get the notification in those circles, but they could still see my post if they, if they look for it. I'm just saying that once we target a circle, they are notified that says Victor's Bakery has shared something with you. Again, as a big... So anyone can see it because it's public so let me show you this if I if I view my profile from a different web browser where I'm not logged in so I'm gonna go to another web browser as if this is a person in in, in Canada and they come to my profile here I'm not logged in they look at my posts they see Victor posted this to the cooking community. So, it's to the public. so it is still public. Right. Not just to my followers. It is to the public. So this person that does ha that has no connection with me sees that I posted this publicly and shared this publicly and then see that they, that I shared this to the cooking community into the baking section. So everyone can see it, just not the people, just the people you put in circles. Things won't get notified. Oh, okay. They, they won't get the notification. They, they won't get that alert that I shared with them. Okay. They could still see it. 
but they won't get the alert. So if they get the alert, they still have to go to your um, Prof page. Yeah. They'll get a preview of it. And so what I'm saying about alerts is, um, or notifications, at the top right corner, you've got a little bell that is going to change color to red, and it's going to have a number. Once someone follows you, replies to your post, when you get notified that someone shared something with you, so your followers, when you select the circle, they will get a notification up there, <coughs> you know, one of many that they might have. And they would click on that, and it would say right here, like that, David Frank. Um, David Frank gave me a plus one. So posting to a community. I have no followers, but I'm already getting activity. Posting to that community. He gave me a plus one. It could say David Frank replied to you. David Frank followed you. David Frank plus one or re or shared your post. So those are the notifications up there. So I shared my post. And David Frank plus one did. He liked it. As I said, that's the lowest level of interaction. It's not the worst, but it's the lowest. He plus one did, and that's it. He moved on. Maybe if he really, really cared, he might have actually replied and said, "Well, try to make big, uh, try to bake the biggest chocolate chip cookie." That's more interaction. Once I know that. David Frank um, interacted with me. Uh, I might be then figuring out that uh, what kind of content to further post. Because I'm going to mix it up, I'm going to post maybe a text post today, and then maybe a photo tomorrow, and a video the next day. I'm going to alter that here and there for a couple of days and such. And I'm seeing more people are liking or plus wanting the photos, but more people are replying to my polls then I can figure out more of my strategy of what to post. You don't know until you try. There's no one-size-fits-all. You're going to see a bunch of blog posts, articles, and tutorials that tell you, post on Google Plus at this time. Post on Facebook at that time. That only really applies in very generic terms. Your particular audience might really be nightbirds, so they're going to look at your stuff at 9 p.m. Why are you posting at 10 a.m.? On your Facebook, you may discover that the people really care about videos. And that tutorial is telling you, post a video at this time or that time. So really, you have to, you have to cast lures. You have to catch the fish. So cast those lures, wait for them to bite. The more lures you cast, the more fish you'll catch. So that's why you've got these different kinds of content to post. And the more you do this, if you're only using your Google Plus once a month, you're not using it enough to see what's effective. Once a week is better. Once a day is best. That's obviously a lot of work. But as a beginner, resolving to post something on your social networks once a week is a good starting point. Your goal would be once a day, or once every other day, or once every three days. Posting? Posting. Yes, posting. Putting content out there for people to find and care about. And the point of all of this is we're using Google in an advanced way. We are creating a profile which will give us a leg up against our competitors that don't have a Google Plus page. We are building an audience here of potential followers, potential customers. And part of SEO is to have an online presence not just on your website, but in as much of the web as possible on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, your website, a blog, etc. It's a long game. But the best thing that I can tell you after knowing some of the basics of Google Plus is find communities, join communities, and be active to communities. This works amazingly for my clients. Clients come to us and want us to do social media, and then we tell them, okay, what are you on? And they say, well, we're only on Facebook. And then we say, well, let's give it a try on Google+. And they say, well, we've had Google+, but it didn't work out. And I say, do you use communities? They say, what's communities? Mm -hmm. So as we're seeing here very 
briefly, uh, I got some activity from posting on a community. The more I do it, the more I keep it up, the more activity I have, the more communities I join, the more audiences I could reach. Yes. I mean, if somebody were to do a Google search about something, did some of this content show up in a Google search? Yes. That's why um, we have those options of sharing to communities or public. Remember, public a moment ago said this could be found by anyone anywhere. So yeah, the stuff you put on Google Plus could show up on Google search. They're so integrated together. It's all a Google product. I search for cookies and I see a bunch of communities. Three members, 62 members, 445 members. Well, that's the only one that kind of approaches my criteria. It's still a bit low, but maybe. Let's see. I'm going to click on cookies and cupcakes and I'm going to vet the community a bit more. Dear cookies and cupcake lovers, have fun. Share your love for cookies and or cupcake. If there is any bullying, hate, they will remove. They will be removed right away. Thanks. So I'm seeing here, yeah, Dita posted something, and it's got one plus one. Zuna posted something, one plus one. That's got a reply. That's got a reply from the same person there. Uh, two plus ones. I would not be plus oneing that. Not a lot of activity. A seven here, that's good. So it's kind of a low activity community. Well, maybe not so bad. I could join it. I could then contribute to it, and then maybe later decide, never mind. Um, leave the community, so you won't know unless you try. Yeah, maybe it'll work out. I will join. Some of these do have activity. What also is the purpose of joining a community is to see what people are posting that is getting activity and then to give you inspiration of what to post. Notice how many of these that have lots of, po uh, lots of plus ones and such have great photos. No one liked that Darth Vader cookie jar, but people loved this spark, uh, sprinkled cookie shot. So maybe it's the angle of it, because it's a close-up, and it's the angle, and all of that. And that's just kind of straight on. It doesn't look that good. So you can get inspiration to see what people are posting. <coughs> Many people love this one. Maybe I could do something similar. That, of course, requires a little bit of uh, skill in photography, but we've all got a camera in our pocket or purse, probably, so we can practice. Didn't come out right, delete it, and try again. So when my company is hired for social media, we of course uh, figure out as much as we can about the company, talk to the owners, what's their plan, business plan, marketing plan, all of that stuff. So then we can better decide which social networks work, will work best for you. Maybe a company's very visual, so it'll work really well to be on Pinterest and Instagram. Maybe they have, maybe they're uh, a law firm, so maybe I would be on Facebook and maybe even something like YouTube or Periscope, because we could do videos. We could do quick 30-second free law tips on YouTube or Periscope. Um, for Google+, Plus, we could reach an audience that really cares about a particular topic via communities. And because it's so integrated with, with Google Search, and they're a local business, I want them to show up nice, uh, like stand out on a Google Search. So there's many pros and cons to all the networks. The more you get educated to them, the better it'll help your business. And again, I talk about your business, your product, and all of that. But this could apply if you're trying to find a job as a web designer. If you're on all these social networks and connecting with people that need a website, that are unhappy with their website, I could get clients. But the more you're active on social media, the more you could reach a target audience, the more followers you get, those could become customers. It's not a guarantee. But the more you do it, the more lures you cast, the more fish you could catch. And that's why in this advanced Google class, I talk about Google+. You might have heard of it. Now I'm telling you why it's important. We're going to wrap up very soon. When we come back next time, we're going to use Google Advanced in order to set up Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. We'll tell you what those are, why they're important, and it'll go toward understanding 
if you're being effective on Google Plus or Twitter or Facebook and such. So any general questions at this point? All right, we're going to end the main lecture. Um, we'll do it again next week, same time, and we'll keep learning advanced Google.